check this out. Hot rod here. Just put a water pump and a thermostat in this JK. 2013 Jeep Wrangler 3.6 Pentastar. Um, if you want to catch those videos, there's a playlist. And it's got water pump and thermostat in it in one video. Got a coolant temp sensor video in another one. PCV valve in another video. Oil cooler replacement in another video and there may be more i can't remember uh if you haven't already hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and uh, a little feedback in the comments if you got any questions or just want to say something um so these things are pr uh, problematic with um air pockets so when you open a cooling system up and there's lots of lines going in and out and all directions they tend to form air pockets they get little pockets of trapped air and that can cause um, hot spots and cylinder heads or uh, wherever it can cause it can cause lots of damage actually if you don't get them out of there so um, what I like to do there's several different ways you can do this but this is the cheap way to do it I've got a funnel system and you can see this uh, will get the water line uh, up above everything else in the system so gravity helps out and pushing that air out and the air bubbles will come burping up out of here um, it takes a couple heat cycles sometimes so what i like to do i've already filled this thing up once and i ran it for about five minutes until i had a little bit of heat coming out of the, the vents but it wasn't coming out of the vents very good uh, so then I, I had something i had to go do so I, I let it sit for about 30 minutes came back and now we're going to use the funnel. Um, we'll go ahead and fill it up with 50-50 mix. And uh, I always use whatever the manufacturer recommends. Or you can use a, um, a universal coolant. Uh, lots of places carry stuff that will mix with anything and not cause uh, corrosion, electrolysis, and stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of times you mix like a green coolant with a red coolant uh, or something like that, like a Dex Cool with an old-style green antifreeze. You'll get a an electrolysis uh, can occur and start eating and etching aluminum parts inside the engine. I've seen it happen uh, in Chrysler's quite a bit when I was a uh, dealer tech back in the day. Um, so just be careful with that. Run If you've got uh, some brown looking crap in it or whatever, do a, a coolant flush. And uh, I think I've got some videos on flushing cooling systems too, uh, maybe even on this Jeep. So, um, yeah, get that stuff out of there until you're running clear, cool water through it again, and then you can drain all the water out and go back with a 50-50 mix. So, I've already got about, we did a water pump and a thermostat, like I said, and I also did a timing, I'm sorry, a coolant temp sensor. And uh, we've only got, we only got it to take about, I don't know, three quarters of a gallon of coolant. We know we lost more than that all right so that's our mix what i'm going to do is just go ahead and fire it up turn the heat on and see if it pulls that mixture down and if it does you don't want to fill this thing all the way up because if it starts burping it's stuff going to start overflowing and making a huge mess i'm going to set your heat all the way to hot i just turned the vents on about i don't know three or four clicks got it on upper the upper registry where i can just reach in and feel the vent um this is my brother's jeep so i'm pretty familiar with it it's had some um junk built up in the heater core that we've back flushed several times we've taken the heater lines off individually in the past and forward and reversed flushed it trying to get that junk out of there these engines had a problem um with sediment from the engine block during the machining process or something that got stuck in there um, that gets caught up in the heater core from what I've read and um, it causes the heat to do funny things and can also cause an overheating problem if you got a, a clogged heater core so if that cooling system's not tip top uh, in these things they will overheat all right so we'll let it run a few minutes we're gonna watch this coolant level it hasn't done anything yet so I'll let it build some heat and we'll come back and check it in a minute. For being stubborn, I'll get in here and um, give it a little throttle, bring the RPMs up off idle.
kind of just feel around and uh, give it some throttle. It's starting to build some heat in the vents now. All right, let it rip for a few minutes and um, check our levels. What happens sometimes uh, when you get in there and rev them up, they'll uh, volcano out. You see it, it volcanoed out, spilled, probably bop, popped the air pocket. Um, all right, so I'll add some coolant back to it. I was starting to get some heat in the vent, so I let off the throttle. And I bet when I did that, it's spewed back up. So we're gonna have a big mess to clean up, but that's just part of it. Now they make let that bubble a minute. They make a vacuum system where you can put say like uh, your mix antifreeze mix into a five gallon bucket there's a hose going into that and then there's an attachment that goes to the radiator fill it pulls a vacuum on the system sucks the, the whole system down gets all the air out like that under vacuum and then you switch the valve to fill and it automatically sucks all the coolant out of your bucket and into the engine and cooling system until your um, cooling system is full of liquid and no air and that works pretty well and I see it, it sucked every bit of that down vacuum deal works pretty good it's not a, a foolproof method uh, this is definitely not a foolproof method this is a very messy method uh, but it's a very cheap way to do it very inexpensive way to do things and it does work sometimes it just takes a little longer all right we'll let it run a minute check the heat right, less than a minute again it's, it's probably been about i don't know 45 seconds and it's starting to bubble Air bubbles are coming out, coolant levels going down. Sometimes you can just take your heater hose, pump it a little bit, and sometimes that'll help get some air out. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in it just to give gravity a little uh, Sit here and watch it for a minute. Overheating volcano looks like. Woo. Not good. Not good. I stepped away for like two or three minutes. All right, that's gonna suck that in there. I really don't want that. What we do want though is um, that coolant to get sucked in. Boy, we got a serious mess to clean up, don't we? And it sucked all that down. At this point we're just gonna let it cool off a minute and see if uh, anything else bubbles up and this level goes back down um, these things can get real finicky sometimes and like you just saw it, you can make a serious mess in an awful short amount of time uh, trying to burp, burp air out like this but it's just part of it you got to get the air out um, we'll just take a water hose and rinse all this stuff down real good and um, 
hopefully we will uh, get all this air out pretty quickly and not waste too much time. I got still got to change the oil on this thing. And uh, it's getting late in the day. All right, got it running again and um, starting to bubble some more air out. So I think we had an air pocket in there. It got scalding hot and then it, when it worked itself out, it just started blowing out. So, I mean, sometimes that happens. The, the thermostat's obviously open because I got good heat coming out of the vents. Um, this thing's always blown hotter out of the center vents than it does out of the outside vents. But sitting there at idle, I did have some hot air coming out of the outside vents. So we're gonna let it run. I'm not walking away this time, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna monitor it. And uh, if it starts rising, I will um, I'll just plunge it with this. I'll just stick this right in there and stop it, and I'll cut it off and let it cool down for a few minutes, and then I'll slowly release that plunger and, and if it's see if it'll suck the rest of it down in. Um, that's acting as the radiator cap because we don't have a radiator cap on it, right? So uh, these things run an 18, 18 PSI cap. So the higher the cap pressure you run, the more the boiling point lowers or raises, actually, it raises. But also you build more pressure in the system and can blow stuff apart. So you don't want to run like a real high pressure cap or seal it totally off. Got to be able to vent. We're getting some activity in again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plunge this thing, turn this thing off for a minute. All right, brought it outside, rinsed it off a little bit. Um, I'll let it just cool off for a few few minutes. It's got a lot of pressure on it. This thing, once you plug this, it'll continue to build a little pressure. And um, our overflow is full, which it shouldn't be that full. That thing should be about halfway full. This mark right here, if you can see my finger, is... Um, because that's the max, so that's it's about a it's about a quart over max full. That can push out. It's supposed to push in and suck out. It's an expansion tank, so people call it an overflow. But it does overflow if you got too much in it. But it's supposed to the cooling system breathes in and out when and it gets real hot. It builds a lot of pressure. Sometimes it needs to expand, so it expands over into that tank, and when it cools off, it sucks back back out so i'm gonna let this thing just chill out cool off for just a little bit and um uh then we'll take the plunger off and if it doesn't suck that down then we'll just uh, put the plunger back in it and take it off and then we can take it off down here with the plunger in it and all this stays in here you can just put that right back in your in your coolant jug and then you're done pretty much so i like to Go for a couple test drives before I release these back to the customer. Make sure it's not going to overheat on them. Make sure the heat works good. Make sure the air conditioning works good. The fans are kicking on. and um, We don't have any leaks. Stuff like that. Just want to be thorough. Most shops don't have time to be as thorough as I like to be. Uh, I waste a lot of time with just not wanting stuff to come back. Uh, plus, this is my brother, so I'm going to spend extra time. Um... But to be honest with you, I, I do the same thing with my regular customers. So it is what it is. If you hope you got something out of this video, if, if uh, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of comments on that overflow, so leave them. I love them. I want to see them, positive or negative. I don't care. Leave me some comments down there and let me know what you think. Uh, there's better ways to do this. I know. Uh, if you have better ways, hey, I want to hear them. I've only been doing this 30 years. I uh, still learn every day. Every time I work on something, you learning something new trick or learning what not to do. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. Hit that subscribe. Thumbs up. Peace.